In the livestock world, a cow should theoretically give birth to one calf per year. But there are a series of obstacles that will prevent this theoretical limit from being reached. For that reason, certain mechanisms are being implemented to improve the reproductive parameters of livestock ranches. In this case, fixed time artificial insemination. Let's look at the story of the Argote family who has been involved in livestock ranching for many years, where every generation implements new ideas, which has positioned their company at the cutting edge of technology. Let's meet Andres Argote and see what choices he implemented to improve his livestock's production. In this livestock operation, we decided to work the Brahma base we've had for 40 years, and we introduced Angus to the herd 15 years ago. The reasons why we started to work the Angus breed were mainly commercial, because the crossbreed calves that we produced were highly sought after in the market, especially in the Bogota High Plains. In addition to that, we realized during the last 10 years that the Angus breed was the most prolific amongst the other breeds. What does that mean? That they produced more calves over their lifespan than other breeds. But introducing the Angus breed was not the only idea that Andres wanted to implement in his livestock enterprise. We introduced artificial insemination to our herd, which gave us a powerful tool to improve genetics. It was a very important technological advance, and our reproductive parameters improved due to artificial insemination as such, but also because of the precocity of the Angus Cebu F1s. Part of the work we have done to improve the ranch's fertility rate has been through artificial insemination. Looking for animals that have greater efficiency, both in reproduction as well as in production. We have worked crossbreeds, but we have not set aside our Brahman based, and we have selected them for fertility. Here we have reached some standards that are measurable. We have a broad base of information to make decisions. Let's talk about the functional biotype of the Brahman bull. The idea is to cover all of the racial characteristics of a bull looking for the strength of those characteristics so we can identify what the strengths of those bulls are so that when you go to acquire or buy these animals you will have an idea of the importance of the various traits starting from the head from the bull's nose all the way to the tail from the back all the way to the tip of the prepuce like in this animal I want to show you how to spot an ideal bull and give some pointers and what to look for in a bull for either a commercial or a breeding farm. What a livestock breeder is looking for is to improve genetically, is to improve genetics through its reproductive bulls, through the semen that he's going to sell from those bulls. The idea is for those genetics to be distributed throughout the country, for them to be distributed to our fellow commercial ranchers with the goal of spreading the genes of improved bulls. By contrast, commercial ranchers seek to maximize meat production so they look for weight gains among the offspring of the bull that he is buying. This is measured by weighing the calves right after weaning and when they have already been fattened. Therefore, we are selecting a pure breed bull for a pure breed herd, what we seek to improve traits that the herd is maybe missing. If the animals in my herd are small, we will look for a bigger bull to increase the size of the animals in the herd. 
Then we focus on certain characteristics in the herd that we want to improve, so we can produce a biotype of exceptional animals that we can then sell to commercial ranchers. Here on the farm, we have Panamanian grass. Panamanian grass belongs in the drier areas. It has very good ground cover and it controls undesirable species in the pasture because it is very invasive and it is said to have allelopathic properties. We have urare, which is a brachiara erecta. Urare grass belongs in the more humid areas but not in standing water. It has very good palatability, and it recovers very quickly because of its growth system, and it is not resistant to prolonged droughts. Body conditioning and along those lines nutrition are fundamental factors in order to obtain a better reproductive performance from our animals. That is why in La Vallenata they make the greatest effort to provide high quality diet and paddock management. They also keep a flow chart of the paddocks which helps in the management of the ranch and in the collection of data to help improve the ranch's reproductive processes. Our corporate policy is to always improve. There always has to be a way to be better, and finding it is the most difficult and complicated issue. The challenge we have set for ourselves in our livestock ranch is to always improve. You can't rest on your laurels and say there's nothing more I can do. You have to look for the tools. They're there, and not just in the field, but you have to look to technology because that is where you will find the tools to improve your cattle range. After having studied the issue with a reproduction technician, or zoo technician, we decided to implement fixed time artificial insemination. FTAI is a procedure that has been developed in the last 10 to 15 years, particularly in countries like Argentina and Brazil. It is a procedure that basically tries to accelerate breeding cycles on the farm. So if you want to raise cows, FTAI is the good option. Fixed time insemination is a tool that does not require detection of when the animal is in heat. It seeks to optimize reproduction times on the farm. It provides the opportunity to synchronize the animals, which helps in programming feeding, paddock preparation, and improves efficiency in production. The parameters that must be taken into account when selecting a bull when a rancher goes to a ranch and decides to buy one, two or three bulls. What are they? First is the animal's registry. We must keep in mind to buy registered bulls, pure breed bulls that are certified by an association. This registry tells us exactly its genetic history, who is the mother, and what is their lineage on their mother's and their father's side. The first parameter to take into account is the genealogy or registry of the bull. We look at the phenotype and general shape of the bull, at the bull's ideal biotype. We look for a bull that we like, with a good head and good hump, a masculine bull, with good depth at the ribs, with good legs, good bone structure, good gait, and very good testicles. The general composition of this bull will give us an idea of the type of specimen that we are going to take back to the ranch. 
You have to take into account that 50% of the animal is provided by the bull and the other 50% by the cow. Thus the importance of taking into account the maternal lineage of this specimen. We're not going to buy a bull just because it's pretty or because it has the registry, but also because of its reproductive characteristics. We look for a specimen with good testicles, one that ideally has a fertility certificate issued by a veterinarian. Through that fertility certificate, we can know if it's a bull that's suitable for reproduction. Another tool we can use when it comes time to choose a bull, either for commercial or breeding purposes, is to compare side by side those that have caught our attention. This will help us to contrast the traits of one over the other and to have better clarity when it comes to choosing. Fixed time artificial insemination is not a new program. It's a program that's been around for some time and has been well studied. The tool we have at our disposal to shorten the intervals between births is fixed time artificial insemination. What we want to do here is to force the onset of estrus speed up heat in those animals that maybe are lagging and that are not helping to improve the efficiency of the farm. The goal is to give those animals just a little push so that they get in heat and we can then service them and get them pregnant, which is the objective of this breeding farm. In order to perform FTAI, there are some necessary conditions. For us, the main condition to be met is the livestock's physical conditioning. That is basic. When it came time to select the animals, we took into account their body conditioning because it adds to the success of the program. The installations must be in good shape so that they are comfortable for the operators as well as the animals. They don't need to be equipped with high tech. Everyone that is part of this group, everyone has the responsibility. The cowboys know their job. They have been trained by the inseminator and the professionals. Transmitting the knowledge of the procedures that we perform is key to getting good results. Communication between specialists and operators is fundamental. Besides, we must respect the intervals and indications given by the technicians. It's important to highlight that the quality of the semen helps to achieve the specific target you seek in your ranch. It is important to know the different alternatives the market brings us. The great value added of a tested bull is just that, the test. It can take us to where we want to go. It's different when we use a bull that is untested, about which we have no information. It doesn't mean that an untested bull is necessarily bad, because there are very good bulls, but the probability that they will pass on something interesting, something that we want, is much lower. To guarantee good results in the FTAI procedure, we must take into account prerequisites like good body conditioning, good installations, good operator training, and a database that is up to date. We are basically looking for an animal that has the traits of the Brahmin breed. We're looking for a broad forehead, a head that is not elongated, but rather relatively short. When we reach the level of the neck, we look for a bull with a firm neck, a neck that is completely covered in muscle, a neck that is long but covered in muscle, because we're talking about a meat-producing breed. Then, we look at the middle third of the animal, which is basically the whole ribcage that we see now, starting from the loin of the animal. 
Buscamos dorsos que sean completamente fuertes. We look for strong backs, backs that are level, and that when seen from above, they look very wide. We have now reached the rib area. We are basically looking for a rib cage that opens backwards and sweeps towards the back. And besides that, it must be deep. That is basically the ideal rib cage length for a specimen. We are looking for wide haunches covered in muscle, also with good length. We are looking for strong legs that have no abnormalities, no inflammation at the level of the hocks. The idea is that the foreskin is either above or at most that it reaches this line that I am tracing now. If the foreskin is above this line, then that is ideal, because that is a foreskin that is short, and that way we avoid many problems in the patterns. Next, we see the methodology and the procedures for the FTAI that was performed at the Vallenata Ranch. The choice of animals to be included or excluded from the program is based on whether or not there is activity in the ovaries. So, we use a rectal exam to see if the animals are in the middle of their cycle or if they have cycled already. Many come from a natural mount, so they have already cycled. Obviously, if it's very likely that there will be a pregnancy, we won't include them in the program. After being clear about which animals will enter the program, we proceed with the protocol. We insert an intravaginal device with progesterone. This is absorbed and reaches the hypothalamus. At that moment, follicular atresia takes place because of the follicular wave in conjunction with benzoate. And on the fourth day, a new follicular wave starts from scratch. The chosen follicle is inseminated 52 to 56 hours after the device has been removed. When you administer progesterone, you are basically signaling to the cow that she is pregnant. She will think that she's pregnant when you insert a device, but on the seventh or eighth day, when we remove the device, the cow's progesterone levels will drop, and then she will think she's no longer pregnant, and really she's not. And the act of removing the progesterone makes her enter heat in approximately two or three days. So what we basically do is simulate the heat cycle. We induce heat and add other hormones to try to set up a date between the ovum and the sperm at a specific time. The benefits that can be obtained from implementing fixed time artificial insemination in your farm are optimize the use of manual labor on the farm, improved grazing rotation, more efficient distribution of forage supply, a reduction in the amount of bulls on the farm, better system sustainability by reducing the servicing season, an increase in weight at weaning due to earlier births. And it facilitates the insemination of animals that are not entering heat. Fixed time artificial insemination is but one of many tools available in the market, knowledge of which should be made widespread in the sector. Every rancher has the responsibility of evaluating and researching how these techniques can be useful to them and thus drive the development of the industry. Having a large testicular circumference is directly related to the puberty of the female daughters of this bull. It has been proven in scientific studies that a bull with good testicular diameter will produce daughters that enter the reproductive state much faster than the daughters of bulls with smaller testicular diameter. Depending on the type of animal, its relative importance and its requirements, there are two tests you should perform. One is the BSE, or Breeding Soundness Examination, which measures reproductive behavior. 
It includes a measurement of semen concentration, morphology, motility, as well as testicular circumference. We hope not to find any reproductive pathologies that can interfere with the bull's reproductive performance. Due to the sometimes restless but not aggressive behavior of bulls, all of these tests must be performed by means of an electroejaculator. The ejaculation itself, as well as the volume and quality obtained, are involuntary, which is why the BSE does not measure libido or ability to mount. When you have to evaluate the bull's libido, you measure complete mount or attempted mount during a set period of time. That is an additional complementary test that the client should request from the professional. These tests are easy to perform, there is nothing complicated about them, but unfortunately they are not included in the tests we normally perform on bulls. 90% of field tests performed on cattle, especially on indicas, are made using the electroejaculator. And I repeat, these are involuntary ejaculations and we don't measure libido or mounting capacity. Having a breeding bull in our livestock ranches is of vital importance. And for that, we must be clear about its phenotypical and genotypical characteristics. Today, we looked at the functional biotype of the Brahmin Cebu, and we understood the differences between a breeding operation and a commercial operation, and the role the bulls play in each one. <laughs>